Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. With the cold weather and holidays upon us, more folks are cozying up to the fireplaces to stay warm. But the Fargo family wants to warn others after their electric fireplace receiver went up in smoke. Valley News team's Rose Itzkovitz speaks to the family and experts about how to keep your home safe. That's what's scary, is the what-ifs. Fargo neighbor Terrell Grollum says her family uses this fireplace all the time. But the other night, she smelled smoke. And looked back here, and sure enough, I this was smoking. Luckily, she caught it right away. We were probably minutes away from igniting a fire, I'm guessing. The family had it plugged into a power strip. With this on it, with the fireplace on it, plugged into another power strip. The Fargo Fire Department says without an investigation, it's the cause can't be determined. Mm -hmm. But they always yeah. recommend plugging high power it's objects like this um, directly into the wall. And the West Fargo Fire Department says the same. Plug them directly into the wall. Don't use an extension cord. They have a lot of demand for electricity and they can overheat and start a fire. Meanwhile, home and hearth specialist Allison Smith says you have to make sure the power needed for the fireplace matches the voltage of your outlet. That's when you need to have a trusted licensed electrician look at your electrical and see if you have an existing outlet. Is that outlet wired to the correct voltage? If not, they might have to switch over. It's worth mentioning the family's fireplace is a Dimplex. Back in 2010, the company issued a voluntary recall of one of its receivers. We went out, looked at everybody that had purchased that fireplace from us. We let them know about the recall. We offered to order them parts free of charge to get that fixed. But not everyone with the Dimplex knew about the recall, depending who they bought it from. Case in point, the Grollums originally had that receiver that was recalled. And it wasn't until that one melted earlier this year that they found out. I called them and they said, oh no, we'll just send you another one because it's on recall. Still, this latest one that melted on them is not on recall. That's why the Grollums want to warn others to pay attention to what they're plugging their heaters into and to unplug before leaving or going to sleep. In Fargo, Roseskowitz, Valley News Live. We reached out to Dimplex to find out if there have been issues with this more recent receiver box, but didn't immediately receive a response. One person is dead after a police officer shooting in Bemidji, Minnesota. It happened at the intersection of 30th Street Northwest and Ridgeway Avenue. Police say it was a traffic stop gone bad. They say the officer pulled over a driver who had a passenger with a felony warrant for their arrest. Police say they noticed the individual had a handgun and that's when a fight broke out. That's when the officer and a deputy who also responded fired their duty weapons, killing the individual on spot. No names for, of anyone involved has been released. The officer and the deputy have been placed on standard administrative leave. If you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, call us. Our whistleblower hotline is 237-6576. We will do our best to get to the bottom of it. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Not much sun today, but it sure felt nice out there. Sure would be great for those conditions to hang around. Let's check in with Hutch for a quick look at tonight's weather. Thanks, Mike. It does look like the soupy conditions do continue across the valley. Here's a look at visibility. There's some fog setting up out to the west. Carrington, one quarter of a mile, four miles in the Cooperstown area. Reduced visibility will be the main threat tonight as the radar is fairly quiet with all the snow shifting into the arrowhead. Temperatures right at or below freezing for many across the valley. Watch for those slippery spots as we slip into the 20s during the overnight hours here in the FM area. A significant storm system developing in the central and southern Rockies is heading toward the plains. All details on where it's going and how it'll impact your weather here in just a few minutes. Hopefully not a lot. Thanks. Mm -hmm. A three-car crash caused traffic to be backed up for several blocks this afternoon on 25th Street in Fargo. The crash happened at 18th Street South just before 3. Two of the cars involved appear to have hit head-on. Traffic was slowed to one lane while crews cleaned glass off the road. The cause of the crash has not been released yet. Police are alerting you to a high-risk sex offender now living in South Fargo. 29-year-old Michael Allen Jans is living at 103 22nd Street South. Authorities say he was convicted in May of 2010 of gross sexual imposition in Burley County, which includes Bismarck. The victims were three 14-year-old girls. Jans was also convicted in April of 2008 of sexual assault also in Burley County. His victim was a 15-year-old girl. 
Fargo police have a warning to pet owners after they say someone reported finding a small block of what they thought was rat poison this morning while walking their dog. The block was found on a popular walking path in the 3500 block of 18th Street South. No dog owners wanted to talk with us on camera today, but say they're concerned and are going to be extra careful now watching what's on the ground and what their pups are putting their snouts into. One woman said she wouldn't even know what rat poison looks like if she saw it on the sidewalk and says she wonders if someone planted it on the trail. Common symptoms your dog might have if they get into rat poison are loss of appetite, paralysis, and seizures. Fargo police say they don't know for sure if it was rat poison or why it was there. The man arrested in the death of a former police chief who was shot in Becker County claims that the shooting was an accident. 54-year-old Morris Dodd Jr. says he was hunting in the area and shot at a fawn to scare it off. Investigators say that shot went through a vehicle, hit and killed Jay Nelson. Investigators found a spent shell casing where Dodd said he was hunting, and it matched the bullet found in Nelson. Dodd is facing a manslaughter charge and a felon in possession of a firearm charge. Abina, Minnesota woman's death has been ruled a homicide, and her son is being held in connection with the death. 34-year-old Thomas Wayne Matthews was arrested after police received reports of an out-of-control individual outside the Big Winnie Bar in Bina. Matthews was arrested in connection with two incidents, including the murder of his mother, 54-year-old Joy Matthews, on November 28th. Matthews is currently in the Cass County Jail, pending formal charges. A St. Cloud, Minnesota man has been charged allegedly for having his teenage son dump bloody deer carcasses on the hoods of two cars owned by Somali African men earlier this month. 61-year-old Daniel Nolan was charged with contributing to the delinquency of a child, could wind up spending a year in jail. The complaint says that Nolan watched as his 14-year-old dumped the skin carcasses on the cars that were parked outside of YMCA on November 14th. Surveillance video tracked down the pair. Nolan told police it was just being funny, but acknowledged he probably could have stopped his son. Nolan said he didn't know who owned the cars and was not trying to target the drivers. One of the Somali men told authorities he feared that the deer was a message that he wasn't wanted in the community. Still haven't had your flu shot? Well, it's not too late. Later on Valley News Live at 6, where you can go to get one. Up next, still too early, a warning about going out on the ice right now. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know. Valley News Live. You're watching Valley News Live on KVLY, your hometown NBC station. Unlike Santa's presents, ours don't just magically appear. They're designed meticulously. Every bolt, stitch, line of code, tested and tested again. Until finally this. Elves got nothing on us. Now get over 10,000 in total savings. For just $209 a month, visit your local Northland Ford dealer today. Amazing deals are going on now during Menard's Christmas Home and Gift Sale. For excellent power and precision, get this F80 Sonic Crafter Oscillating Tool from Rockwell. This multi-tool kit includes 10 accessories and a case. Pick it up today for only $99. Keep your windshield clean with Splash Ultimate Windshield Washer Fluid. It's effective down to negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Right now, only $199 a gallon. Plus, give the perfect gift this Christmas with a Menard's gift card. Boy, season's greetings to you all from Menard's. Make it a Merry Christmas. Get everything you need during Shopco's Holiday Gift Sale. Get 60% off trees, lights, ornaments, and decor. 50% off cold weather bedding. And all toys are 20% off, including Nerf, Barbie, board games, and more. Plus, all luggage is 50% off. And take 50% off family outerwear and accessories. Make it a Merry Christmas with Shopco, your holiday headquarters. Shop in-store and online at shopco.com. At Toyota, November is Govember. You've got places to be and people to see. Everyone's raving about our amazing savings. We've got super big deals on super sweet wheels. Go safety. Go style. Go adventure. Get to Toyota's Govember sales event before these deals are going, going, gone. Get $2,500 customer cash on our new 2018 RAV4 or get 0% APR financing on RAV4. Find yours at buyatoyota.com. 
Toyota. Let's go places. Donate to the emergency room patient supply closet at Essentia Health today. A state task force is now studying how sexual assault cases are handled in Minnesota after dealing with several shortcomings in the investigation and the prosecution of these cases. The state attorney general says the task force found the investigation had widespread lapses in how assault cases are handled, including failures in police training and staffing. The report says some sexual assault cases are not prosecuted because of inadequate investigations, misunderstandings or lack of awareness for the role of trauma victim survivors. The panel expects to release a final report with recommendations for the legislature on December 18th. Minnesota's Department of Natural Resources is reminding those anxious to ice fish that conditions are not ideal for winter fishing. This is after a man plunged through thin ice on his ATV in Candy, Ojai County earlier today. The 49-year-old man pulled him, was pulled out about 200 yards from Big Candy, Ojai Lake shore. Water safety experts remind you not to walk on a lake until there's at least four inches of new clear ice. And even then, they should check conditions every 150 feet. The DNR says it could take several consecutive days of below freezing temps before enough solid ice is formed to support foot traffic and even longer before vehicles like ATVs and snowmobiles should be on the ice. Of the six ice fatalities last year, five occurred during the early ice season between late November and early December. All of those fatalities occurred while the victim was on an ATV or snowmobile. And there is so much going on underneath the ice that we don't see from above the surface that it's um, there might be warm water currents coming in. There might be a school of fish that is keeping the water warmer and open underneath. The DNR recommends four inches for ice fishing, five to seven inches for a snowmobile, eight to 12 inches uh, or over for a vehicle. Later on Valley News Live at 6, a sad statistic that factors into a drop in life expectancy rates. Temperatures remaining on the cool side of things here across the valley while it is warm to the south and west. A storm looming in the western and southern Rockies is going to work its way into the central plains. I'll tell you how that impacts our forecast next.